Hi, my name's Don, and I appreciate your company on my two-day tour, November 2nd and 3rd, 1975, to Bamiyan and Bandamir, driving down from Mazar Sarif. The scenery in Afghanistan is incredible. Here we stop to take pictures of a large canyon. The roads are winding and treacherous. Here we stop for an overturned truck, and it's very difficult to get by. We carefully squeeze by. Success! It's on to Bamiyan. I always enjoy looking at the locals who are very curious of these strangers. Children too are curious. Remains of towers and forts are found everywhere in Afghanistan, remnants of a violent past. We are approaching the Bamiyan Valley, tall cliffs and a fertile oasis valley. Here we are in Bamiyan itself, gigantic Buddhist statues have been carved into the red cliffs. Also, numerous caves are found throughout the cliffs, sanctuary for Buddhists. <laughs> These statues have, of course, been blown up by the Taliban. We rent horses and go horse riding to explore the area. We move on to Ban Amir, a national park which has a large freshwater lake, quite unique for Afghanistan. As a Canadian from a land of water, I'm not really too impressed by freshwater lakes. Late at night, we head from Bandamir back to Bamiyan. Our vehicles break down and it's very cold. Thanks, viewer, for joining me on my trip to Bamiyan and Bandamir, near Kabul in Afghanistan. From this point, we head on to Kabul or Kabul and then Pakistan. My name's Don, and I want to thank you for joining me on my overland trip through Afghanistan for three weeks in late 1975. Enjoy. The route rolled by our heavy-duty truck tires lay from Iran over to Herat, north to Mazar Sari, down to Kabul, stop over in Bamiyan, and then an exit into Pakistan by the Khyber Path. 
This is an Afghani chai stop. We frequently stop at places like this to drink Afghani green tea. The sugar lumps were kept for one customer after another to use. Typical Afghani transport when I was there. Don't the children look cute? An Afghani wool merchant. Such scales were used in every shop for weighing produce for charging. Here's an Afghani shoemaker working in a market. Another Afghani salesman. These Afghani wool skin coats were all the rage and were quite cheap to buy. We arrive at markets in Kabul. They're very interesting in the range of produce. Here are musical instruments and old Afghani guns. This is my friend Paul Machuk from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Here's an Afghani village well. Irrigation, Afghani style. These typical Afghani trucks are seen all over the country. This is David Self, a BBC photographer who traveled with us on our trip. He produced a one-hour BBC travel documentary called The Road to Kathmandu. At times, the scenery in Afghanistan is stunning, but always very arid and barren. It's not very good agricultural land, although they do grow cotton in areas. It suits the goats and camels and sheep. Along with the sheep herder, we get caught in a large sandstorm. This NASA photo from a satellite shows the size of some of these dust storms. This is an Afghani market where they sell goats, sheep, and even camels the way we sell cars. Here a butcher slaughters a sheep for sale. This cotton picker salutes us as we drive by.
This man is working as a carpenter in the village. This is the back of our truck as we stop for a quick rest and the locals look on with curiosity. <laughs> 